strong, back to where it needed to be, and I'm here at 100% feeling the best I've ever felt. And when you say you should have taken the time off, is that just physical recovery or just the chaos of, you know, having a kid in the house? You know, like, I, I thrive under chaos, so it wasn't so much the, the chaos of the baby. Um, it was physically uh, right after, I had a really bad delivery. Right after Reagan was born, I was in the hospital two times within the first two months with infections, so those were pretty bad. Um, right before my fight with McKenzie, I had a stent put in because I was having kidney stones. The week of my fight, I had to pass a kidney stone, so I was on medication. Um, but you have that in your head where it's just like, you know, these are the obstacles you have to go through and it's all going to work out, but that's not the case all the time. So I fell on my face. Um, Mackenzie was on a rip at the time, so that was a horrible decision on my part. And I just kind of went in there hoping, you know, but it was also part watching Amanda do everything she was doing while sitting on the sidelines. Um, so I had to take my head out of all that kind of stuff. And, and now it's, I got to be good. I got to be healthy. I got to be happy. And that's where I am now. So I'm excited. Is that kind of what December was related to? Was just all this, thing, is that why you had to withdraw basically? Yeah, actually, um, I was trying to go down to 115 again. As soon as I started with the dieting and all that, um, the kidney stones came back. Um, and anyone that had them will tell you they're no joke. They're extremely painful. There's nothing you can really do about them. Um, so coming into that, uh, I, as I just started training more, you know, they tell you, oh, don't eat so much green vegetables, high protein causes, all the things I needed to do to make 115 were giving me kidney stones, uh, you know, and, and the first time I had them was on top of breastfeeding and trying to lose that 70 pounds to make 115. Uh, so it's just a storm of things, and I wasn't going to do it to myself again and take the fight knowing I wasn't feeling well. Um, I talked to my doctor and talked to Amanda about it, and 125 is where it should have been for a long time, so it was easy to pull the trigger then. So 125 moving forward? 125 moving forward. Makes sense. All right, we'll talk about the matchup here with Cynthia. She's, uh, you know, had some ups and downs, but some great moments, I guess. What do you, what do you think about her as an opponent? You know, I, I don't, the ups and downs are normal in the sport. Um, I don't think of it as anything horrible, you know. Um, it wasn't so much her fault that she was so pushed heavily in the beginning, so she got all this attention, and then once someone loses, like, all the haters come out and be like, oh, because, you know, like, I feel for her in that because that wasn't her fault. You know, I think she's a great fighter. I think she'll bring out the best in me. Um, so I, I don't look – I've had my ups and downs. You know, I've had crappy decisions. You look at my record, it's not amazing, but I have records that aren't on there, fights that aren't on there, and I've had about three fights that could have gone either way. Um, so I don't think that means much. I think she's a tough opponent. Um, she's been training with John Wood, who I'm very good friends with, so um, I know she's gotten better, and I look for the best Cynthia. Last thing for me, I guess, does this feel like a must-win type spot for you? I mean, you've had some setbacks, but you've also faced some very, very tough competition and dealt with a lot on the way, so does this feel like i got to get a positive result, or is it more just about i got to go in there and feel right? It's i got to go in there and feel right. I'm not so much worried about the results anymore because I've beaten myself up over that before. Um, I've, I've come close to, a, I was in a contender fight against Tatiana. That week was horrible. I ended up getting like strep. So like things happen to me that now I just kind of laugh at it. Um, that fight kind of gave me that decision that I did want to stop and have a baby. You could say I was in the prime of my career when I did that. Um, but I don't regret it for a second. I do want more children, but I'm not going to say that this is my last fight. I'm going to go in there and fight with this new excitement that I have about how I've been feeling coming up to 125 and just the energy of having a happy home life and having my dreams outside of the UFC happen. Um, and I'm just a happier person. So I feel like that plays big in your performance. Hey, Nina. Well, one thing that people have noticed that is uh, your coaching on The Ultimate Fighter. Um, it's uh, some of the best on the show. Is that something that um, you want to do after you're done fighting is kind of just coach? <laughs> Um, so, I used to want to be a coach. I did. Uh, me and Amanda's dream was to open a gym, mainly targeted toward female fighters. Um, after being a coach on the show, you know, I'm not sure if I want to do it. Not so much because of, like, all the work that's put into it, but I feel like the past 15, 20 years that I've been fighting, um, and Amanda, were a bit burned out from that scene. Um, and we haven't yet been able to... Uh, enjoy all the things that we have like accomplished over the years you know I do want to travel I do want to 
take my daughter everywhere. I want to give her a great life. I want more kids. And I know to be a coach is a 100% thing. You know, I'm not going to half-ass it. Um, if I were to be a coach, it would be something that I committed to 100%. And I'm just not sure I want to do that. Um, so I wouldn't go into it not knowing it was 100%. You know, I've, you know, it's not out there, but I've been Amanda's coach for the past 10 years. So I do know what I'm talking about at the highest level. Um, and I love to give any girls that I train with advice, not just on what it's like fighting technically, but just the sport in general, you know, from a business standpoint of the future of what the sport can bring financially. I feel a lot of people struggle with that. Um, but, you know, I, I can't say that I wouldn't do it 100%, but I would need to take a break once I retire, enjoy a little if I get the itch, you know, I'll step in there and maybe do some coaching. Gotcha. Cool. Thank you. No problem. And Ian, thank you for taking the time. Um, let me circle back to when you mentioned, you know, the getting over it, the, you know, conquering these demons. You have a wonderful partner, your amazing daughter, but you said you're beating yourself up. Well, how were you able to get past that, get over it, and just conquer that? I mean, you know, you hear a lot of stories about how some fighters are just so great in the gym and they don't even understand how you lose fights. And I feel like I was one of those fighters, you know, like I felt like everyone expected so much from me because I was doing so well against, you know, like Amanda, some of the best fighters in the world. And I just, sometimes I, it, things happen during fight week. I don't want to say it's a mental thing. Uh, sometimes it's physical things that have happened to me or just bad luck. And I haven't put my pressure on me needing to prove anything to anyone anymore. The people that I care about know what I'm capable of. And it's just, I always used to put that pressure, like, I need to show everyone how good I really am. And, like, I don't care if anyone knows how good I really am anymore, you know. And I took that pressure off of me. And now I'm just going to go there and have fun at what I know I'm good at. That's excellent. You know how good you are, and that's all that matters. Yes, and Alex and Amanda and a few people that train with me. <laughs> Fantastic. And then, so with that being said, you have an opponent who's just as hungry, just as dangerous. When you and Amanda and the team are, you know, going over the stat, the crunching the numbers, game planning, do you think, okay, we get more out of her losses than wins to calculate what you're up against? Um, you know, I don't really look at it like that. Like, I, uh, for me... A fight is a fight, and I don't dwell so much on what someone's done in the past or what I've done in the past. You are literally one fight away from, a, from jumping 20 spots in the rankings. Like One fight can change your whole career in this sport. Uh, so I never look at that. You know, I was there once. I was losing crappy fights to decisions I shouldn't have lost. And then I was knocking people out. So you never know. You, you think you know, like, oh, I can't do this six weeks out. I can't. I have to be. It's not like that. You know, I've won some of my best fights not giving a crap. And then I've lost some of my best fights doing everything you're supposed to do. Um, I took that out of it. I'm ready physically, uh, mentally. I trained really hard, and I'm just going there and fight. Sounds like a plan. And last thing for me, how fun, how exciting, how memorable was it being on The Ultimate Fighter? It was definitely cool. You know, at first, um, when Amanda was offered the position, uh, it was only men on the show. We kind of asked, like, hey, can we get some girls? And they actually had a girl line up. So we're really excited about that. Uh, sometimes I feel, although I have extremely well coaching advice and there are men that do listen to me in the gym, it'd be hard for me to go to a bunch of heavyweights as this little girl and be like, hey, you should try this. You know, like it was intimidating a bit for me to want to coach men. Um, but with the women, I vibe really well. You know, I, I, I just, they accepted the advice better. I'm not saying the men didn't, but in my head, you know, it must be weird for a girl that's tiny to tell a heavyweight how they should fight. Um, so once the girls were on the show and, you know, we had a really great team, I connected with them. Uh, Amanda and I, we talk about it all the time, like whatever happens on the show or whoever wins, like we had the great team. We had the best team. Excellent. Thank you for your time and good luck on Saturday. Thank you.